I am delighted to welcome to the show this morning the Wrexham, uh, Wrexham Irish midfielder, Anthony Ford. Anthony, how are things? Good morning to you. Morning, lads. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Bit of a bit of a mad fairy tale going on over in Wrexham at the moment. It's um, it must be a lot dealing with all this publicity and and uh, the cameras and the action and the full stadiums. It's um, it's quite a quite a moment, quite a thing that's happening over there. Yeah, it's been crazy. Um, I didn't expect it to be this crazy when I when I first signed, but. Yeah, it's been a bit of a show all season. I think the last few weeks now have really kind of upped it and the cameras and all have been around the training ground most days and stuff. Um, but it's been very exciting. Um, and obviously getting the the reward the night was amazing. So there was a lot of pressure building, but it was all worth it in the end. We, we'll get to that the, the whole Wrexham season and, and uh, the madness of it all in just a second. Your own background, um, Anthony, so... You're a Limerick, you're a Limerick boy, and you started off. Was it Mick McCarthy handed you your 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 Premier League debut? You were only a kid, essentially heading over to England at first, so must have been all a bit mad. Give us a, a sense of your background. Yeah, so I grew up in Ballingarry in Limerick and played all through the underage there. Um, got trials from probably twelve years old onwards, and uh, ended up signing for Wolves at fifteen. Um, so I moved away when I was fifteen and. Mick McCarthy gave me my debut at 17 at Wolves and um, yeah, it's been from there really. Um, it's been a, a great journey so far. It's, a... it's it, like it, th- those moments when you think back to Mick McCarthy, are you, are you thankful for someone like that? Do you still keep in touch with him as someone who, who kind of gave you your chance starting off? Oh yeah, like I wouldn't, probably wouldn't speak to him a lot but if, I'd, if I see him and stuff, we'd have obviously great respect for each other and um you know, when I came through at the time, it was, it was amazing. He was he was unbelievable with me. Um, so I'll always be grateful for, for him giving me my chance. The Premier League debut against Chelsea. I mean, that must have been quite an experience as as a as a young lad to be standing in a Premier League pitch against the opposition of that ilk. It's 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 quite a moment for you, I'm sure. Yeah, it was. I think um, <clears throat> that was the moment. I think when I when I got on the pitch and I thought, Jesus, I'm actually here. Like. <laughs> But Ashley Cole in front of me and stuff, and it was just, it was madness. Um, I always remember just looking up at the stand after I, after and on the pitch, and I was just, I was in shock, really, to be honest. Um, but it was an amazing experience. Um, and I suppose moving home from, moving home from Ireland at fifteen and putting in the hard work, it all, it all paid off when, when I ran on that pitch that day. Yeah, you've had a number of different clubs thereafter. Then you had Walsall and Rotherham United amongst them. But how did the how did how did the move to to Wrexham come about? Then how were you approached? So I was in pre season. Um, I was still at Oxford, and I had another year left. But uh, the my agent rang me and said the manager wanted to speak to me here, Phil Parkinson, and I was like, I'll, I'll have a chat with him anyway and see see what the story is because I didn't obviously know loads about the club and stuff and um, after I had the phone call with him he I, he's, he's a great person and he kind of um, sucked me in more than I thought to be honest and uh, he told me about the whole setup and how the owners back you and they're, they're not just these famous people that don't care they're really into the club and put a proper effort in and uh yeah, about a week later, I I made the decision to go, and I was just like, it's the it's the best decision I've I've made to be honest. Um, it was just all, you know, too exciting. It was something different, and obviously now we've got promoted, it's it's paid off. You you're not alone in some of those um, players, and even you mentioned the manager probably has dropped down a couple of divisions as well. There are like a lot of players who seem to be. Like it's an unusual move, and it seems to be like there's a lot of players who um, have bought in uh, to the story or the ambition um, that are at Wrexham. How hard a decision uh, when you were weighing it up, Anthony? Was that? Um, I think obviously, I think he explained that the players that have have come and stuff, and I knew that we'd have a, a strong team to get out of the league, um, and. It was just something exciting for me. The club's massive, and I I knew you'd be playing in front of ten thousand every every home game. And you know they haven't been out in this league in fifteen years, and I really wanted to go and be a part of it. Um, 
and it just excited me to be honest with everything um, that was going on there and uh, the after I'd say the first two or three home games I was like you wouldn't even think you're playing in a lower league it was the atmosphere at the home games is just incredible uh. Uh, and yeah as like I said it was the it was the best decision I made um, obviously you're taking the, when I look back at it I was thinking like what are the pros and cons but really like there was apart from probably dropping but I was 29 years old and I just thought like why not try something a bit different and be aiming to win the league somewhere mm. um, and it's been it's been great relief now since we did do that the other day and you say like obviously even in terms of the the fans and the stadium the whole experience doesn't feel it feels like divisions above and I'm, is it is it sort of the same in terms of the playing staff I know obviously Ben Foster is one uh, standout example of somebody who's had a career at the very top level but also um, as somebody who's been following the documentary uh, religiously over the last couple of months I'm uh, somewhat familiar with the uh, playing staff at Wrexham now but like very obviously you look at the stats and the playing styles of the likes of Ollie Palmer and Paul Mullen does it feel like a team that are also like ready in terms of the players that are there at the minute to make that step up? Oh yeah, for sure. I think we've we've got a a really strong squad even to be, you know, competing with hopefully getting promotion again next year. Uh, I think, you know, this this season we've added a few more players as well and um even Ben Foster said that he couldn't you know, get over the standard when he first came in. Um, and I was a bit like that as well, but the team's just grew stronger since. And we, we, I think we'll, we'll push on again. And it's just about the, having the, this depth in the squad. And we've definitely got that. You're, you, you had a bit of time away from the, the pitch as well for personal reasons recently, Anthony. And I know uh, your manager, you've mentioned Phil Parkinson, was, was quite keen when you, when you came back in your, your first start and, and goal as well, I think, against Yeovil Town recently, was quite keen to mention you by name in, in his post-match interviews um, and, and even just your attitude and how good it's been. Uh, I mean, there was even a round of applause, I think, for yourself in the dressing room. It must be so nice to have that environment somewhere where you can thrive and, and take that time away, but also come back and, and have that positive, positive atmosphere. Yeah, it has. It's been it's been a difficult time off off the pitch um, for us here. So we've we've had a bit of bad news, you know, on the family and stuff. So I needed time off the pitch, and um, the support, like I said, from the club was amazing. From the owners, from the the gaffer, from all the lads, and you know, he never they never rushed me back. Said said uh, take as long as I want, even if I don't come back this season or whatever and a few weeks went by and you know things we got a bit better news and stuff like that and um, I I wanted to get back into routine and Laura my my uh, girlfriend said that you know she wanted to get back to a bit of normality as well and got back training and, and you know I was just waiting for my chance and I did everything I could Um in training and extra bits whenever I had the chance to, you know, you lose your fitness fairly quick, especially when you're playing at a high level um, on the weekends. And uh, we had a, one or two injuries and I came on. I started against Jovel and, you know, got the first goal, which seems to be an, an important goal now. And the gaffer just uh, said some really nice stuff after the game. And, um, you know, it was really nice to hear that, but it was also great to get back in the team and and make a difference too when it, I'd been out for a while um, but yeah like I said the, again with the club the support I don't know if I'd if I'd have had as much support from, from other people elsewhere there's been some great clubs and stuff but um, you know they've really really made a huge effort with, with me and my family so um it was great to come back and get the goal and you know show them that appreciation too that's great to hear that there's a proper family atmosphere in the club as well regardless of how big things have become I'm even looking at the list of the, the, the squad here and there's definitely an Irish influence in this in this team as well Anthony I mean you look at Liam McAlinden Thomas O'Connor um, Owen O'Connell I think Owen's actually a cousin of Paul O'Connell as well so there's a there's a definite sprinkle of Irishness uh, within that camp which I'm sure helps oh yeah it does um that's what we were saying. We're we're starting to take over now, but uh, we've um, we've got a good group of lads there, and Kev the physio is Irish now as well, and uh, 
Yeah, do you know, it's it's great to have a few Irish lads with you, you know, for the for the crack and stuff. And um they've all been great since since they've signed as well. And uh you know, it was nice to get the picture with the flag on the pitch after as well the other day. Um so they're they're good friends of mine now as well and um Owen always says it, he goes, Every time my name is mentioned it's Paul O'Connell gets a mention. <laughs> the famous uh, cousin, that's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. But uh no, they're they're good lads and you know, they've they've been great recently as well. That that definitely helps and and, and like they're they're quality players as well, but it's also increasing the interest. Probably you've noticed maybe in Ireland, like as Adrian mentioned, the documentary is one thing, um, and obviously the Hollywood Stardust is another as well. But because there are Irish players, I think a lot of people over here now, and because a lot of the games are televised in some sense, people probably want to follow it over here more. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean. It's gone. It's gone a bit mad. Like you know, I think even all my friends now and um, stuff, they're all. Mad Wrexham fans and they love watching it and I think the documentary has been huge a huge part of it and you know, they're filming for season two now which would have been recently as well which uh, lifting the trophy so that should be that should be out in August I think um, so yeah it's exciting it's um, it's strange having the cameras around when you're not used to it most days but you get used to it after a few weeks um, but it's it's exciting and it's great for people at home, but it just shows how big Wrexham is is getting, like all over the world. Really, you've busloads coming from America and everything to games. It's just bizarre. Like it, it's crazy even to see the likes of Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney and what it means to them in the stands. I've, naturally enough, I guess the cameras are panning to them at uh, quite a few moments during during matches. Uh, but it's also the fact that they're they're going to women's games as well, and the women's team are doing brilliant stuff. They're clearly owners who are fully fully invested in what's happening at Wrexham oh yeah like fully they're it's they're absolutely crazy about the club <laughs> and it's not just that it's just even like I said before they they make an effort to it it's not just certain players it's everyone's players everyone's family after the game the other night you know they invited us all over to their their box in the back and in, in the stadium and all the family and friends got to meet them and you know, they're just great people, um, normal people, even though they're that big, but they're just genuine good people. Um, and they've they've made a huge effort with us, um, you know, even texting you and you get the odd FaceTime and stuff like that. And it's just, it's mad really when you think about it, like you, we, sit, we were sitting on the sofa a few weeks ago and we got a FaceTime from Ryan, like and me and Laura and my little boy Paddy were just on the sofa and it was we were just got off the phone thinking this is mad, <laughs> this is mad. would um, you have, would you have been a Deadpool or always Sunny fan even before this or have, has that come as a result to be honest no I wasn't I wasn't and uh, I've watched a bit of them now since since obviously <laughs> I saw stuff like that and uh, Rob did a bit uh, a few shows in Ireland last week and he said mm. he, his life and he sent us a message from the from the stage and stuff, and all the all the crowd were shouting in the background and stuff, and just little things like that that they do is just you never ever think things like that were going to happen um, when I signed. But it's just it's really nice, you know. They they go into an effort to to make other people happy all the time. Like it, it's it's unbelievable to watch. Finally, Anthony, I mean that the. the now that the promotion from the National League has happened, you're into League Two for, for next season. What's the what's the ceiling for this Wrexham team, do you think? You, you talk about another promotion, two promotions in a row. It would be incredible for, for Wrexham to get straight back up into into League One as well. But do you think this this team has a ceiling or how far can this whole project go? Yeah, I think, you know, this the squad we have, like I said, can definitely push on again, but you don't you don't want to look too far ahead. It's like this year, you take you take it game by game. Um, you, you know when you look too far ahead, it just you you lose concentration on things. And we we've done really well at keeping it game by game this year because we knew Nats County were were le- leaving us breed. So I think next year, like I said, I think we've got the squad to to go again. But it's about you know focusing on each game. And I think if 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 we do that, there's definitely a chance we'll. We go back up the leagues with with the squad and the 
the staff that we have at the moment as well that you know the gaffer is, has also just signed he's always does his work on good people as well which makes a big difference to the dressing room um, and that's that's been important this season definitely as well well, listen, Anthony, it's been brilliant to watch. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep flying the Irish flag over there as well. No doubt the interest is only going to going to increase as well. So it's been uh, it's been fascinating to watch the whole thing play out. Um, but uh, thanks a million for hopping on this morning with us. No problem. Thanks, lads. Great stuff, Anthony Ford there, the uh, Wrexham midfielder, Limerick man as well. So uh, great. It's an, it's an unbelievable story. And uh, we'll no doubt be keeping an eye on that story over the next uh, seasons as well as, as Wrexham develop and, and push on further. That podcast, by the way, if you missed any of that chat with Anthony, you'll get it back uh, in the OTP podcast network.